Welcome, I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about the five things we learnt from Craig David and reveal those highs and lows. And hopefully it will inspire or even motivate you. As we only judge a person here by their character, not race, colour or religion. So please join our Motorcoat family if you're new. <laughs> My name is Bobby A. Said. I am the founder of the MS Show. Our multicultural definition is also reinforced by the Cambridge English Dictionary. Craig didn't have an easy start, as these articles shown, as his love for drink was more than women then. And the music industry isn't known to be equal, with many artists complaining about being exploited. However, we can see he was born to write songs and perform with a successful career. At such a young age, he has raised his concerns about the lack of diversity at times. And his feud with Keith Lemon, the comedian. Let's hear from Craig David on receiving his Emmas whilst he was on tour in the US, the land that all musicians want to conquer. I'm out in the US trying to promote my album and fly the flag for British music. Why don't you call your mans no more? Even though I know I'm not in England like before. But yo, you know you should have come and checked me when I was on tour. So tell me what's changed. So tell me, can you fill me in? Number one, passion. Craig David was born in Southampton, England and is the son of Tina Lotus, a retail assistant, and George David, a carpenter. Craig's parents are both from diverse backgrounds, with his father being Afro-Grenadian, whilst his mother is Anglo-Jewish. And the combination had developed Craig's understanding of cultural diversity from an early age. His parents separated when he was eight, resulting in his mother moving with Craig to southwest London. Growing up, he was inspired by his mother's diverse musical interests, which ranged from Stevie Wonder and Terrence Trent Darby to the Osmonds. In his teenage years, he attended Bellamore School and in Southampton City College. However, it was during this time when Craig was unfortunately bullied for a period in school, which led him to write and release the song Johnny in 2005, recalling these memories. Craig's father played bass in a reggae band called Ebony Rockers. And so as a teen, he began accompanying his father to local dance clubs where DJs let him take and use the microphone, which allowed Craig to first experiment with his musical interest. Despite being subject to bullying for a period of time, he refused to let it get the better of him, continuing to develop his passion with music throughout his teenage years and on. Number two, discipline. Craig's earliest exposure came when he worked on a B-side for the British group Damage and their cover of Wonderful Tonight. He then started doing vocals for the English garage band Art for Dodger, featuring on tracks such as Something and What You're Gonna Do. Through his hard work, he had a successful start to his musical career and was noticed by Wild Styled Records. They first became aware of Craig when his manager at the time met the label co-owner Colin Lester and played some of his music, with Lester being particularly impressed by the song Walking Away. At that point, Lester offered Craig a deal in the development stage with his label. When he later heard the now popular song Seven Days, he immediately saw its potential as a number one record and promoted the contract to an album deal the very same day. After signing with Wildstar Records, he began to release major singles and collaborations which were well received by his growing fan base. His song, It's All About The Stranglers, hit number two in the UK charts in 1999, followed by another release of the single, Fill Me In, which topped the UK charts, paving the way for his single career. It was the first of the four top 10 singles from his debut album, entitled Born To Do It. The album sold more than 8 million copies worldwide. The song Key To My Heart was even featured on the award-winning Warner Brothers animated film Amosis Jones in 2001. The success of Craig's debut led to the US release of Fill Me In in May 2001. Then came Born To Do It album released in the US just a couple of months later, which peaked at number 11 
on the Billboard 200 chart and sold over 1 million copies, with the wildly popular single Seven Days also hitting top 10 during this release. Craig was actually in the US promoting his musical career and latest album when he won his Emmys, which highlights his ambitions he had in achieving international success alongside others, even in his early career. The success of this album is even made more impressive from the fact that's the early 2000s, where a low point for British musical success in the US, with less than 2% of top 100 US albums in both 2000 and 2001 being from the UK. In April 2009, MTV viewers voted Born To Do It as number two on their greatest album of all time category, only being behind Michael Jackson's Thriller from 1982. Number three, positive. In 2009, Craig revealed to his fans that he had signed a new record deal with Universal Motown. And from this, his success continued over the next few years. He featured in Jay Sean's new album, All or Nothing, and performed a bold new cover of I Wanna Be Like You from Walt Disney's The Jungle Book on ITV program Ultimate Movie Tunes in 2010. Just two years later, Craig featured on a number of tracks whilst recording his own album, including releases with Stereo Palmer entitled Our Love and a collaboration with Mahobi and DJ Asad titled Addicted. Craig would also go on to appear on various radio shows, including BBC Radio 1's Live Lounge in 2015, performing with Singular, where they would cover Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth's huge hit, See You Again. The following week, he appeared in Corrupt FM's 60 Minutes Takeover with Mr. Jam. He performed Fill Me In over Justin Timberlake's track, Where Are You Now? And it became viral as the internet sensation. It was later revealed that his Radio 1 Extra appearance led to a collaboration with Big Nasty, releasing a track when the bass line drops. This debuted at number 50 in the UK, but peaked at number 10 by February 2016, becoming Craig's highest charting single since 2007. Number 4. Consistent after signing a new record contract with Insanity Records in January 2016, Craig stunned fans with the release of his seventh studio album, The Time Is Now, just two years later. The Time Is Now debuted at number two in the UK, a great achievement for Craig, and the following year he was given the opportunity to perform on the BBC One's New Year's live concert at Westminster Central Hall with his full band. Number five, Generous. Crave has been involved in a variety of charity shows over the years, such as performing in a fantastic event called Rendezvous, which had the objective to help fund the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. In 2010, Craig lent his voice to the global fight against tuberculosis and was appointed Goodwill Ambassador for the Stop Tuberculosis Partnership for his generous work and commitment to helping the cause. He has also performed in events like Youth Music Give a Gig Week in 2018 in aid of the music education charity. I'm very happy to be part of Give a Gig Week from as far away as LA, where I'll be making a donation from my show there to support the great work Youth Music does. Music has transformed my life and I want all young people to have the chance to develop their musical creativity and achieve their ambitions. This really shows why Craig is an inspiration to all young and hopeful music artists, as he devotes his time in helping to provide new exciting opportunities for communities from all ethnic backgrounds and cultures. In summary, Craig's musical interest developed from a young age, from the influence of his parents, his father played bass in a reggae band called Ebony Rockers, whilst he was also inspired by his mother's diverse musical interests. From his upbringing, Craig continued to develop his passion for music throughout his teenage years and on. Why don't you leave us a comment and let us know if the team has missed anything, as it has been known that the vast music industry hasn't been so easy for many ethnic minority artists to get signed. Would you say that there is discrimination still within some labels? And is social media the proper platform to discover artists? 
would really appreciate a like or even a subscribe and if possible please donate on Patreon however little the amount to support this channel's ongoing mission to undertake multicultural campaigns. And remember it's what's inside that counts, a motto we have used at the Emmas. As Craig David has proven, you can't hold back one's talent, especially when committed to your craft at such an early age. So until next time, thank you for watching or you can stick around to view another great video coming up. And remember to keep it multicultural.